Today we're going to read the one and only super duper golly whopper Jim Dandy really handy clock talk stopper by Patricia Thomas and illustrated by John O'Brien. Old, gray, and grouchy porcupine lived in a house where the sun didn't shine. A deep, dark hole, once made by a mole, below the lumpy stump of a twisted pine, and not a very happy soul was that porcupine. Here is porcupine coming out of his front door, and this is his window on the stump of a pine tree. And here's his chimney. No, sir, he didn't like the stump. He didn't like the hole. He hadn't even said thank you to the mole. But then anyone who knew him would incline to expect that of the porcupine. He was, you see, one who could never be quite content, no matter what he did or where he went. In summer he got entirely too hot, but in winter he'd be too cold like as not. Each day he'd say, the sun was too bright, but then he contend it was too dark at night. He was, in short, the sort who would complain whether it did or did not rain. He had no friends who'd stop by to play or ask, how do you like the weather today? Why bother? They already knew what Porcupine would say. So mostly he just stayed in his hole by himself, alone except for his clock on the shelf. He'd sit there in his rocker and rock, and grumble and mumble to his clock, and the clock would answer simply, tick tock. So this is what Porcupine's house looks like. It looks cozy with the fireplace and his purple rocking chair, and these stairs must lead to his front door. And this is the clock on the shelf that he always talks to. Well, things went along pretty much this way, until one day, when he could think of nothing else to complain about, he vowed his clock's talk was too loud, and lit out a shout. Clock! He cried. I find it shocking that you should prattle and rattle on with this constant tick-tocking. While you make so much noise, I can't hear myself think let alone propose to doze off a wink. Tick, tock, answered the clock. So the porcupine shouted once more in his loudest voice, Clock, I demand, yes I command, you to stop this noise. The clock paid no attention. Tick, it said firmly. Tick, it said firmly. Tock. Porcupine lives alone and only has his clock to keep him company, but even that is annoying him now. He says it's too loud and he can't even take a nap. What do you think he's going to do about the clock ticking? The porcupine, not knowing what else to do, was in the process of removing his shoe, ready to throw it at the clock, when, just then, at his door he heard a knock. As he opened it, in walked a rabbit, who tipped his hat and said, Sir, you don't know me, but I understand that you have a problem, and I'm here to solve it. Yes, dissolve it. It seems this is your lucky day, for I just happen to have here in my bag the one and only super duper golly whopper Jim Dandy really handy clock talk stopper. Yes, sir, and it comes with a written down money back guarantee plus a 30-day trial, which is absolutely free, except for a mere $20 deposit, which you can leave right here with me. Well, isn't that convenient? Maybe Rabbit heard Porcupine yelling at his clock and thought he should stop by to help him. Porcupine stared at him in shock as the Rabbit slipped an odd-looking object over the clock. It was sort of a mass of gears and springs, and fluffy pillows tied on with strings. Attached to the clock with a bar 
holding 27 bees in a peanut butter jar. I'll take that $20 now, said the rabbit, skipping out the door. Porcupine stood there, rooted to the floor. The bees started to buzz and beat the air with their wings, which moved the gears, which sprung the springs, which tugged the pillow tied with strings. And now the clock said, Buzz, biz, whir, whiz, boing, sproing, swoosh, whoosh, tick, tock, tick, tock. Wow, that's quite a contraption that the rabbit put on the clock. Let's see, here's the pillow and some springs and the gears and the jar of bees. And this looks like a horn. Did Rabbit's machine help make the clock quieter at all? Nope, not even a little. In fact, it makes it even worse now. Hold on, cried the porcupine. There's something very much amiss about all this. Rabbit, he called loudly, how dare you disappear? I insist you come back here and fix this contraption you've put on my clock, for now its tick is even louder than its talk. Well, here I am, said the rabbit, bounding back into Porcupine's hole. I can see you have trouble. Yes, I can, bless my soul. And it's my fault, too. Yes, it is, for I should have seen that you couldn't stop your clock's talk with such a simple machine. No, sir, you need an attachment. You need the snap-in, quick-fix, custom-sized clock talk stopper, hopper, popper. And I just happen to have one, mind you. There's only one here that I could find you, but it's all yours for only $20, including tax and handling fee, which I can hold for you naturally. Good thing Porcupine realized that the machine wasn't working right. But do you think this, this attachment, this snap-in, quick-fix, custom-sized clock talk stopper will work? I don't know. Let's find out. Before Porcupine could utter a word, the rabbit produced another object so absurd. Porcupine couldn't decide which looked worse, the second contraption or the first. It had a frog in a cage which jumped at the bees, landing on a set of piano keys, which played a chorus of row, row your boat, which struck a match on the final note, which lit a candle in a can, which started popcorn popping in a pan, which spilled out all over the clock, and now it said, buzz, biz, whir, whiz, boing, sproing, swoosh, whoosh, jingle, tingle, hop, Tick, tock, tick, tock. My goodness, let's look at all the things that were added to the one and only super duper golly whopper Jim dandy really handy clock tock stopper. Here's the frog on the piano keys that plays row row your boat. And here's the candle that pops the popcorn. What a mess. Do you think Rabbit really wants to help Porcupine? It doesn't look that way to me. The clock is even noisier now. Rabbit, cried the porcupine, come back this instant and fix this clock of mine. Your gadgets aren't helping. In fact, they're harming and the situation is becoming alarming. Alarming, asked the rabbit. Why, yes indeed, an alarm is exactly what you need. An alarm that will warn you when your clock is about to tick or about to tock. Well, don't you know, I just happen to bring along with me the very thing. And of course, I absolutely guarantee you'll be delighted with this great little accessory. The best part of which is naturally that you can wear it as a hat. It's the first rate, just great clock tock stopper, hopper, popper, fuzzer, buzzer, topper. And it's on sale today, only for the special low price of just $20. Isn't that nice? The what? I've never heard of such a hat in my life. 
The rabbit keeps selling him things for $20, but it's not actually helping. Do you think he's trying to trick him again? Before the porcupine could find his voice to speak, the rabbit took his $20, tweaked his cheek, and placed upon his head an object of which it might well be said that although his head was the spot upon which it sat, it looked very little like a hat. It stuck out right and left in all directions with flashlight batteries and bulbs and wire connections and a scoop that caught the popping corn tripping a switch that raised a horn which blew several notes long, loud, and clear and slipped a fluffy air muff down over each ear. The rabbit, brushing off his paws, turned to go. Then suddenly he stopped and said, Oh, by the way, there's one more thing you should know. This hat is also a radio. It's a neat little feature you'll agree is clever, especially since it's yours at no extra cost whatsoever, except for a mere $20 in rent which you're sure to consider money well spent. I'll take that now, no need to send a bill. It will work just fine as long as you sit very still. With one quick flick, the rabbit turned the radio on. And before Porcupine could speak, the rabbit was gone. Porcupine certainly looked surprised. This is quite a hat, if you can call it that with horns and switches and a radio, but at least it catches the popcorn, which I suppose he can eat now since it's not falling on the floor. And maybe the ear moss will actually block out the tick-tocking of the clock. What do you think? Maybe not. And now the clock said, Buzz, biz, whir, whiz, boing, spoing, swish, whoosh, jingle, tingle, hop, pop, snap, zop, scoop, toot. Hello out there in Radio Land. It's a great show for you today we've planned. We're playing the top 20 tunes or more. Now we interrupt this program for the baseball score. Weather today will be cloudy or sunny and hot, depending on whether the sun is shining or not. Squeak, squawk, tick, tock, tick. Talk. Now that is one noisy clock. Let's see what Porcupine is going to do. I don't think he wants all this noise, especially the radio. Porcupine put his paws to his ears and tore his hair. Well, actually, he tore his quills if you want to be perfectly accurate and fair. And he tried to hide his head under his rocking chair. But no matter which way he turned, the radio hat prevented him from doing that. Popcorn popping without stopping tumbled all over the floor while feathers from the pillows and billows flew through the door. The frog went bounding from table to shelf to chair. Lights flashed, the jar crashed, and bees went buzzing off through the air, everywhere. What a mess! But the rabbit gave him a money-back guarantee, so maybe it's not too bad. But did any of the rabbit's contraptions actually help the porcupine? Mm, I don't think they did. Rabbit! Rabbit! The porcupine screamed. I never, ever in my whole life dreamed there could be such a smash, bash, mad dashing, hollabalooing. I demand you come back and undo all you've been doing. Why my stars, said the rabbit. Am I to understand that you consider the one and only super duper golly whopper, Jim Dandy really handy clock talk stopper something less than grand? Now don't you worry or fume or fret. I'll take care of everything on that, you can bet. Yes, sir, for didn't I guarantee your satisfaction? You can relax, I'm here to take action. With that, the rabbit whipped out a fan, which with one great thrust of a gust blew bees, frog, popcorn, and all into a can. He snapped on the lid, clamped it down tight, stuffed it into his bag and said, all right. 
Now I do recognize that a refund is due, which I'll be happy to put in the mail for you. Or I can credit the whole amount to your rather lengthy outstanding account, which should just about cover the standard cleanup and recovery free. And that leaves only $20 that you still owe me. I'll take it all in cash. Now that I'm through, it's been a real pleasure doing business with you. The rabbit tipped his hat, flicked his tie, picked up his bag and he was gone with a wave goodbye. Hmm, another $20. I wonder just how much money Rabbit made from the porcupine. Do you think it's fair that he had to pay anything at all? The porcupine could only look after him and stare. Very slowly, he sank down into his rocking chair. On the shelf, the little clock whispered softly, tick tock. Well, sighed the porcupine, upon my word. I do believe the loveliest voice I've ever heard belongs to you, my dear little clock. With a gentle tick, what a charming tuck. How quiet and cozy is my home here in this hole. I must remember to drop a thank you note to the mole. Or perhaps I should visit him to ask if he's not all together, delighted with this cool, rainy, bright, sunny weather. Though, on second thought, I'll ask first, so there'll be no doubt that he has no clock tock stopper about. The end. It looks like Porcupine learned to appreciate how nice his home was, that the mole made, and how quiet his clock actually was. He didn't see it before because he was already used to it. But through the experience of the clock tock stopper, he learned it for himself. So in the end, I guess the rabbit helped him. What do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. To read other books, subscribe to this channel by clicking on the red subscribe button or by clicking on the three kids and then click on subscribe. This way you can always find this channel and listen to more stories. Keep reading and until next time on Miss Sophie's Storytime.